What's up, guys? Welcome to Weigel Friends English. I'm Amber, this is Josh, and today we're going to talk about phrasal verbs of parenting, part two. Yeah, so today we're going to focus more on teaching and disciplining your children using phrasal verbs. Teaching your kids can be some of the hardest, most difficult things that a parent can do. So today we're going to talk about some phrasal verbs that you can use when teaching or disciplining your children. All right, so let's get into it. we're going to talk about is the teaching part, actually teaching your kids in ways that we describe that using phrasal verbs. Now, the thing to remember about today's phrasal verbs is that they're very intangible, right? There's going to be some things that require physical action in order to complete. You're doing this for reasons that you cannot physically see. Yeah. So there's going to be a lot of descriptors in here, like really paying attention to the prepositions we're pairing to the verb so that you understand how to use those prepositions in the right context. Because a lot of these are almost idiomatic, especially in this set of phrasal mm -hmm. verbs that we're going to talk about today. So like, for example, the first one is tell on, like, mm -hmm. don't tell on your brother. You can't say speak on, can't say say on, but you can say tell on. And to tell on is to basically tattle. Like you see your sibling do something wrong and you run to mom and dad and say, mom, they did this. Like, yeah. I'm sure you never did that. Um, I'm sure every kid has. <laughs> the idea is that in reality, there are some things that are just way too dangerous that need that attention to be drawn to them. But other things you really don't need to tell on your brother for touching you, especially as a kid gets older. They need to try to start handling some of those conflicts themselves instead right. of always just going to their mom and dad. All right. The next one is to play with. And this one is something you guys have probably heard your kids often try to find someone to play with mm. and so they want to play with you they want to play with their siblings or they want to play on their own yeah and it has another meaning of like don't play with your food yes so yeah you can always say don't play with that don't play with your food this is a really handy one the next one is speak up mm. but you can't say tell up you can't say say up <laughs> it has to be speak up yeah a lot of times kids they are very shy about what to say or how to say it. And so they may not speak so loudly. I feel like our son speaks really loudly sometimes. There are times where he does just have a very quiet voice and you have to say, hey, we can't understand you, yeah. please speak up. So the next one is stay up. And this is when your kids just choose to not go to sleep. They might be in bed, but they choose to stay awake while they're in bed. So we call this staying up. Yeah. And sometimes it means that they don't physically go to bed. Right. So it's always funny after a kid's been up for a late night and they're like, I'm fine. I don't need to sleep. And you let them so that the next morning they feel awful and you're yeah. like, was it worth staying up last night? The next few are actually what you would say to a kid that sometimes is just getting too ahead of himself, where he's just going too fast or going too quickly. Yeah. And you could say something like, hang on or hold on, slow down. Yeah, you've got hang on. But if you say hang up, it means like putting your jacket on a hook or on a hanger. If you say hang with, it means like you're hanging out with your friends, hang out hanging out with your friends, but hang on is to <laughs> hold up or stop, wait for a minute, wait for a second, basically. It's like, just wait for a very short time. So maybe you're trying to finish what you were saying to somebody. Maybe you're trying to set your coffee down so yeah. that you can play with your kid or pick them up. So we say hang on all the time. Yeah. Um, but you can also hang on somebody's words. Yeah. Right? So if a kid was really just into a story that you're telling, they might hang on every word. Yeah. That's what an idiom we would say, that meaning they're paying so much attention, so much that it's unusual how much they're doing it and they remember it and they keep bringing it up later. Okay, let's be honest. There are babies that are really good at hanging on to you and then there are babies that just, they don't hang on to you at all and they're really difficult to carry. We got one of each. We have one of each. So, <laughs> so you've got those that hang on to you. So there's a physical meaning and then there's like a more intangible meaning, which means to wait. Yeah. Wait a minute. Hold on or hold up means also wait for a second. The reason we say hold up is because when you're riding a horse and you have reins, you pull them kind of back. You're supposed to pull them back, but some people would describe that as pulling it up. 
like pulling mm. the horse up, drawing them up. But it comes from that, like hold up means from pulling your reins back on the horse so yeah. that they'll stop. Hold up, hold on means to just wait. Don't drop things. Don't do anything. Just pause a second so that I can put this, this hot drink down and then talk to you for a second and then solve whatever problem is causing a meltdown. <laughs> yeah. And hold up has actually become a noun too. Like what's the hold up? What's causing you to not come this way? Like what's the hold up? Yeah. And then the other one is slow down, which is pretty easy. It like in a car where you slow down when you take a turn or something right. like that, seeing your kids run around at breakneck speeds. And it's just like, somebody's going to get hurt. We need to slow down, otherwise right. it's going to be bad. You can also say it when your kids are talking so quickly mm. uh, and they're doing stuff, they're talking, and they're just way too excited or way too worked up, like they're very angry or upset, mm. something like that, then you can say like, Slow down. Yeah. Calm down. Now explain yourself. Yeah. The last one is keep up with. So this is mm. one of the harder ones. It's kind of like follow along. Keep up with kind of has the idea of running a race where you're trying to follow or to maintain the speed of another runner. Right. So like, for example, if we're on a walk and our two children are walking as well, we might say, hey, try to keep up with your brother. But honestly, the youngest one usually tries to keep up with the older one anyway. <laughs> yeah. The next one has to do a lot more with disciplining your kids. And these might be reasons why you would discipline your kid or it might be the way that you discipline them. So the first one would be messing with your siblings. Oh, man. Every person <laughs> that has siblings that is a native speaker knows that word. Yes. If you mess with your siblings, it means that you're just annoying them. You're not hurting them. You're not stealing from them. You're not doing anything to like physically harm them, but you're just annoying them so much. So this is called messing with them. So kind of like mess with, the next one is to mess around or quit messing around. Yeah, we use this as like a noun phrase. So mm -hmm. messing is a gerund here and around would be the preposition that we attach to it. So messing around here is really just like, it's like an activity of you're just doing a whole lot of nothing. Like it's good for nothing stuff, <laughs> but it's not necessarily just really bad. It's just goofy, silly stuff that, I mean, you're just doing silly things with your friends or your siblings or something like that. So messing around means nothing productive is happening. You're just like hanging out and doing stupid stuff. Which in some context is not bad, but normally when you're saying stop messing around, it's because in that context, messing around is not a good thing. Right. It's inappropriate to mess around in that context is usually what it is. Yeah. So it's like, hey, cut it out. Stop messing around. Yeah. Because we're shopping in the store yeah. and that's not an appropriate place to stick chopsticks up your nose or something. I don't know. Yeah. Like it's not an appropriate place to do something goofy like that. Hanging on the cart and screaming like wild monkeys. That's not an appropriate place to mess around. But at home when we're playing and being silly anyways, that's a good time to mess around. Along with messing around is monkeying around. Yeah. Again, if we took a noun, put an ing on it, made it a gerund and added a preposition monkeying around. You can't split this one up either. This is a good example of messing around, monkeying around. You can use both. Monkeying around still has more of that idea of like you're being loud and crazy. Like yeah. you're hanging on things, you're throwing things, you're jumping on things. We would say that, but it's playful though. Yeah. It's funny. It's cute. It's just in the wrong place. <laughs> yeah. Or sometimes it's just, just too, too much. much. <laughs> the next one you can use as an imperative, as a command, knock it off. Yes. And we wouldn't say knock off. It has to be knock it off in this case. Yeah. Because it's it's idiomatic. So it's an idiom. It's set in its pattern. You can't really change it up. Knock it off is something that you can say angrily. You can say it in frustration. You can say it in an annoyance. But basically it means whatever it is that you're doing, stop. stop it. So the next one that's kind of like knock it off is cut it out. Yeah. This one's, again, cut it out. You can't say cut out. Right? You have to say, cut it out. Cut it out is very much, it's a one-time thing. Like if your parent says that, you, you need to stop. This is something that you say in frustration and anger and annoyance. Yeah. But when you say, hey, cut it out, you better stop. Yeah. Because the next thing that comes might not be so, uh, <laughs> so nice. <laughs> the idea is to actually like get scissors or a knife or whatever, and you cut out the bad part. So whatever you're doing, whatever that bad thing is, 
you cut that out so that we can not have that and throw that in the trash can. So the next one is to let down or to be let down or to let me down. The idea is there's a feeling of being disappointed. Yeah, there's this expectation of how you were supposed to behave and they fell short. And usually we would not use this in terms of like a daily thing. We would yeah. not use it in terms of like, this is a one-time thing. This was a one-time expectation I had for you. I expected you to behave yourself at the banquet dinner tonight and you really let me down. This would be like a one event thing that they let you down in. Now you have to be really careful using this. You don't want to use it very much. This is something that we actually rarely use in America. Yeah. Because if a parent says this to their child, it's really serious. Maybe the parent tries to kind of branch out and say, hey, I'm going to give you more responsibility in this way. And the child fails that task. And it's a very serious thing that happened. That might be the context where you might use that. In American culture, it also has a lot more to do with the motivation of the kid and the reason they fell short. Yeah. So maybe they knew exactly what they were doing and they did it on purpose. Yeah. This is when we would say, you let me down. And we wouldn't really use it for little kids because little kids are going to be little kids. But I might say it to like a teenager who I entrusted them with the keys to my car, for example, and they went and did drunk driving or they went and did something they really shouldn't have. Breaking the law that they knew was the law or they did something that I expressly told them not to do. Yeah then I could say, you really let me down here. I took a step and trusted you with this responsibility and you broke that trust. Yeah. So this would be the instance in which we would use it. It's very serious. You don't want to tell a kid that you, you let me down every day because they'll become so hardened to it. It yeah. doesn't mean anything to them. So the last one is grow up. And this is what kids do, right? I mean, they don't stay babies for long. Yeah. It feels like forever in the midst of it, but it doesn't take long for you to realize how fast they're growing up. So you could say growing up as like a noun phrase, but you can also say to grow up as like a verb, a phrasal verb. Or as a command, grow up. So for example, for teenagers, sometimes as they transition into adulthood, sometimes they still act like kids when they're almost adults. And so what you could say, which is probably not advisable, but you could say, hey, it's time that you grow up. Like it's time you learn how to do your own laundry because you're too old for that. Yeah, it's basically man up. Yeah. Kind of. It's just like <laughs> you need to take responsibility right. and you need to do this seriously. Stop complaining. Stop being a child. Basically, you need to grow up. Yeah. You need to man up. But this is also somewhat rude. So yeah. It's not something that you really want to say, <laughs> yeah. but you can. You've probably seen this on American TV shows where it's just really silly and somebody looks like a more serious character looks at the sillier characters and just be like, grow up. And along with that, the last thing that we're going to talk about today is a noun form that has come from that, which is almost exclusively used with children in America, which is grown-ups. Yeah, grown-ups. <laughs> it means adults. As adults, we call ourselves adults. But children, when they look at adults, many children in America will call adults grown-ups. Because Be they've grown up already. You're right. So when you say grow up, when you have done that, now you become a grown-up. Right. But you're not a grown-up until you're well beyond your teenage years. Like, yeah. probably mid to late 20s. Usually, though, from the kid's perspective, you're a grown-up if you have your own kids. Which I think is fascinating. Grown-up is one of those words that you learn right. and you use and then you stop using it. I don't yeah. use grown-up anymore. Well, here's the thing, though. We do a little bit because we use it as an adjective phrase saying... You're all grown up, mm. meaning when you look at a little kid doing a big kid thing or you're just shocked one day, you just realize you're a little boy now. You're not like my toddler. You're not like a baby anymore. Like you're sitting up straight. You're eating just normally. You're having intelligent conversation. And it's like, wow, you're all grown up today. Yeah, That's something you will hear Americans say quite a bit. All right, all right guys. So that's it for today's video. Those are our phrasal verbs of parenting. Yeah. Keep an eye out. Next week, we're going to post the conversation that goes along with this, where we're going to talk a little bit more about family time in America and what we do. And so hit subscribe so you get that notification when it comes out. That's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye.